As we edge closer to the Democratic gubernatorial primary, <coughs> candidate Mike Johnson secured a key endorsement from former Colorado Governor Richard Lamb this week. As reported in ColoradoPolitics.com, Lamb stated that Mike, quote, has the brains, dedication, and skill and rare ability to move Colorado forward. Penny, I would argue that uh, Dick Lamb is one of Colorado's favorite statesmen. Uh, I would imagine that his words carry a lot of weight. What do you think of this endorsement? Well, if his words really carried a lot of weight, we wouldn't be bringing, trying to bring the 2026 Olympics here. <laughs> well put. But um, Lamb is a great statesman. When you talk to him, he clearly cares about the state. He he is not do he's not endorsing Mike Johnston as a favor to anybody. You know that Dick Lamb says what he believes. And it was a great endorsement. You know, Wellington Webb, we talked about him earlier. He came out too for Mike Johnston. So Mike Johnston has slowly and steadily, for pretty pretty much the first person to throw his hat in, has collected money, a lot of it from outside Colorado, has collected endorsements, but it is still hard to tell how this election is going to shake out with the number of candidates that are on the Democratic side. David, with somebody like uh, Dick Lamb making this endorsement, is it a bigger deal, do you think, for Democratic voters or for Republican voters? I think it's a bigger deal for Democratic voters and a subset of them. D Dick Lamb last held public office in Colorado in January 1987 when he finished his third term as, as governor, the first guy to win three four-year terms ever in Colorado history. Uh, so there's a lot of people who have moved to Colorado and after he was finished in, in his, the main part of his public career. So I'm not sure how many voters numerically this is going to move, but I think it's a high prestige endorsement and for people who are well informed politically, potentially big donors, other elected officials who have memories of, of the history of the state. I think Lamb, Lamb signals a lot and Lamb is a, as Patty said, a thoughtful and independent guy not a knee jerk on on his positions on the issues and so that that's not only an endorsement of uh Johnston's uh, uh, abilities, but also sort of a, a signal about his character that he's going to be an open-minded guy and not always have to take the, the official party line. So I think it'll matter a lot among the most thoughtful part of the, the caucus goers. Penn, uh, as you, you've been a part of middle of this process, both as a lawmaker, as, as a candidate uh, here for, for the city of Denver as mayor, how big do these, how much of a difference do these endorsements make, especially from somebody like uh, Dick Lamb, who is a, a statesman in Colorado, but as I think David made a very good point, hasn't been on the political scene as, a, as an elected leader for quite a while. What, what difference does it make? You know, it, it's, it's hard to say, but the, the reality is when you're in this process, you'd prefer to have the endorsement than not have it as the bottom line. The, the reality is, is you've got a former governor, Lamb, who was very popular. Um, during his 12 years in office, who's been known for his independent streak. You know, one of the, the, the challenges, frankly, that Mike Johnston has to overcome is within, as David was talking about, subsets of the party in both parties, but within a subset of the Democratic Party, you know, Michael's choice, stance on school choice and some of those issues troubled a number of people, which is probably why you saw the, the teachers um, endorse Kerry Kennedy instead. So mm -hmm. Michael's going to have some difficulty with sort of the labor union um, in, in that subset. Uh, and he's already been known as an independent thinker. So having someone like Dick Lamb endorse him is, is positive. You'd rather have it than, than not have it. What it's worth? I don't know. When I ran for mayor, uh, Dennis Champagne, the former mayor of in Aurora, endorsed me. I still didn't win the mayor of Denver's race. So. <laughs> Uh, Natasha, the gubernatorial race for Democrats this year is very interesting because you have a lot of, I think a lot of folks that in maybe any other year would have, could have very easily uh, grabbed a front runner spot. But as soon as Jared Polis came in, it wasn't necessarily that he had all the name recognition, but everybody knew the wallet he brought to the game. Mm -hmm. Do these endorsements serve as a potential counter to the, the predictable wallet that Polis brings to the game? It would have to be a very big endorsement to go up against that much money. However, I think in this election, there's so many things that have changed in the political landscape. You know, it, and, and it, you can look back four years, you can look back eight years, ten years, it doesn't matter. The Obama effect, the Trump effect, um, influence of social media, you know, whether you do TV ads or not, there's just so many things up in the air. The one thing I think will remain con constant for quite some time in this prediction is endorsements do matter because people still want to know that somebody that they trust or they liked 
likes this person as well. I mean, it's, it's why we like Yelp. It's why, you know, Facebook reviews matter. It's why Amazon reviews matter. We want somebody to tell us that this is somebody that they trust. So I think these endorsements will continue to be an important player. I'm not sure it makes up a big financial difference, but it's something that people are going to use. And so we're going to see these endorsements sort of play out all the way through the primary, and then after the primary, there'll be a reshuffling as we get down to a smaller group of candidates.